particular session of the organization design challenges, we will talk about that is what are the different organizational design challenges are there and uh, what are the basic challenges which we can the organization can play by the different roles. The vertical and horizontal differentiation, the managerial implication of differentiation, balancing differentiation and integration, integrating mechanism or the techniques are there, balancing the centralization and decentralization, balancing the standardization and the mutual adjustment uh, and the case study research paper book recommendation and references as usual. Now, whenever we are talking about the organization design challenges is not just what it looks like and feels like design it uh, uh, how it works is there. So, it is having the very important role uh, because uh, it is not the, uh, the look of this uh, uh, pictorious look of this uh, organizational design is there, but it is about the as soon as uh, you design and place the people on this particular organization structure you find that is the they are they are they have to play a different roles and responsibility and uh, those roles and responsibility how then it's working uh, that defines about by the organization structure is there so organization design challenges are that they feel a lot of challenges in designing their structure for the smooth functioning of the department of the employees are there uh, the basic challenges of the organizational design are the balancing the differentiation and integration balancing standardization and mutual adjustment and balancing the centralization and the decentralization are there. So, basically whenever we are talking about the organizational design, so these are the three um, challenges are there. So, first we will take the differentiation. The process by which an organization allocates people and resources to the organizational task and establishes the task and authority relationship uh, that allow the organization to achieve its goals are there. And when we talk about the division of the labor, the process of establishing and controlling the degree of specialization in the organization is concerned. The organizational roles which are very important are the an organizational role is a set of tasks or related behaviors required of a person by his or her position in an organization. Organizational roles are the basic uh, building blocks of the differentiation is there. So, author, the, it shows about the authority and control mechanisms are there. When we talk about the authority, the power to hold the people accountable for their actions and to make the decisions concerning the use of organizational resources are there. The control is the ability to coordinate and the motivate people to work in the organization's interests are there. The These uh, subunits, the functions and divisions are a subunit um, uh, composed of a group of people and the working together who process similar skills or use the same kind of knowledge, tools or techniques to perform their jobs are there. When we talk about a division, a subunit data uh, consists of a collection of functions or departments uh, uh, so that uh, they share the responsibility for producing a particular good or services there. When we talk about these uh, support deep functions that facilitate an organization's control of its relation with its environment and its stakeholders are there. Production functions that manage and improve the efficiency of an organization's uh, conversion process so the more value is created. Here we have to understand that is whenever we are talking about uh, the functions, division, support functions and the production functions are there. So, these all they are making a particular subunit is uh, and these subunits is uh, making the working of this organization structure is there. So, first we have to understand that is the what functions uh, uh, that is the skills and the use of knowledge. And so, here uh, the every uh, uh, position. Uh, which is placed into the organization structure, uh, then they have to demonstrate uh, uh, the, their knowledge skills, uh, knowledge and their skills. So, here it becomes important uh, that is the this type of the production functions uh, and the support functions both are the having the proper functioning uh, uh, division. And uh, in that case, um, when you are making the proper division of the support functions and the production functions, then definitely in that case uh, it becomes a clear cut uh, uh, division and decentralization is there. Now, organization structure normally when it talks about the division is there, so it is the sharing of responsibility uh, for and uh, then uh, for example, marketing division, finance division, operation divisions, HR divisions and all. So, uh, that will making this particular functions and divisions are there. In addition to these the support functions, uh, there are the maintenance functions are there and these uh, maintenance functions that enable an organization 
to keep its departments in the operation is there. So, here the uh, these particular maintenance parking functions uh, uh, there, there will be the organization structure designing where the for example, uh, post poster, the fitter, turners, welders, electricians are there. So, all these uh, uh, staff, uh, these are uh, staff with that will be having the maintenance uh, and keep the departments uh, in operation is there. So, making the proper operation naturally there may be the breakdowns also and to come make correct the breakdowns there is a need for the this type of the maintenance functions are there. There are certain adaptive functions and that allow an organization to adjust to changes in the environment is there and these are particular changes in the en environment uh, that is the uh, adaptive function that will be making the adoptions is there. So, uh, normally like for example, um, I will like to give an example, uh, there is a suppose an export order is there and in an export order naturally there will be the certain changes are to be there uh, in the environment. Uh, I would like to give an example of the uh, textile industry where like the humidity is there and now uh, to maintain the humidity you will require uh, a particular staff uh, and then in uh, here then it will be the adaptive function will be there uh, which uh, you have to keep a provision because your product uh, that require maybe the textile industry, maybe the food industry is required which requires a particular uh, level of humidity. So, therefore, in that case uh, these adaptive functions are to adjust to changes are also very much necessary. When we talk about the managerial functions, then, then this, this facilitate uh, uh, the organizations that is the how you are going to manage these uh, all these uh, adaptive functions, managerial functions and the maintenance functions are there. When you are making this particular changes uh, in the environment, uh, then definitely in that case the managerial functions uh, that facilitate control and coordination. Um, because there are different functions are there and these functions uh, are to be planned are to be organized, are to be controlled and there is a coordination is also there. So, therefore, here you will find that is uh, these are the functions and divisions uh, which are making this particular uh, um, adoption is there. When we talk about the hierarchy, a classification of the people according to the authority and rank is there. Now, the here the whatever we are taking these organization structures. So, in the organization structures we find there is a hierarchy is there, hierarchy means like this like this is a tall structure huh? and in this tall structure there is a this person, this person is reported by this persons, this person is reported by these two persons and this person is reported by these two persons and like this there will be the hierarchy will be there and there, uh, every person will be having that uh, uh, authority and the uh, rank will be there. So, this person is having the one authority for example, assistant manager, deputy manager and manager is there. So, when we talk about uh, um, this type of this uh, uh, hierarchy of these levels, then definitely in that case uh, you will find that is the uh, how you are maintaining uh, a classification of the people is there. So, when you are having this classification of people uh, and uh, then the reporting system uh, will be there uh, accordingly. So, here it is important uh, that is what type of the hierarchy you are having. Now, this is an example of the vertical differentiation is there. The way an organization design its hierarchy of authority and creates reporting relationship to link organizational roles and the subunits are there. Now, we will see the horizontal differentiation is there. So, whenever we are talking about uh, the horizontal uh, differentiation, um, then in that case uh, you will find that is the, it is becoming the uh, aspects of the that is uh, how we are going for this type of this uh, horizontal structure is there. Now, the way the organization groups organizational task into roles and into subunits, functions and division and these are into the horizontal positions these are into the vertical positions are there. So, whenever we are talking about uh, um, these vertical positions uh, and this uh, aspect uh, of uh, uh, this type of uh, the uh, horizontal and the vertical structures, then definitely here we will find that is the this is creating uh, the here uh, all this type of the uh, roles, responsibilities and the functions and divisions are to be there. 
So, uh, these organizational task roles and into the subunits functions and divisions uh, which are created and they will create uh, this type of the uh, structures or the hierarchy is there. So, here the differentiation will be there. Uh, as we have seen that is the reporting style will change and as soon as the reporting style will be changing, there will be the difference into the uh, roles and the relationship also. Now, here the managerial implication what will be the of this differentiation when you making the vertical what uh, uh, how it uh, making a difference then the when you are making a horizontal organization structure. So, no matter what you position in an organization draw, an organization chart too, you can identify the distribution of authority and the division of labor is there. So, here we find that is this uh, authority and uh, the division of labor uh, is uh, uh, on the basis of either into the vertical structure is there or into the in the case of uh, uh, that is the uh, uh, you are having um, the uh, horizontal structure, then these uh, manager implications will be there because the, the distribution of authority. So, here this person is having the more authority right. Suppose, I am, I am putting this structure uh, and uh, this one person. So, this third person, this third person here uh, which is working he will have the less authority because in the structure we find that is they are making the differences there as a level, level is there. As you go into these uh, different roles are there then division of labor is best for the um, that is a task being performed. Uh, so, read, uh, here we will find that is the how many people you work with or supervise and analyze each person's role and the relationships are there. Uh, he, it is also necessary for the, uh, the task being performed uh, that is uh, you have to redefine the relationship and the responsibilities are there. So, um, as soon as uh, you are changing from the vertical to the horizontal or horizontal to the ver vertical you will find that is uh, it is you have to Mm, uh, redefine it uh, and the relationship will also change along with the responsibilities. So, if you supervise more than the one function or the department uh, then analyze the relationship among the department wise. Now, naturally uh, for the marketing de department you may like to have a different organization structure, for the HR department you may like to have a different organization structure. So, make sure that the division of labor that is the best source of the organization's mission, the creation of value for the stakeholders is there. So, ultimately what is the objective? The objective is that is the value creation for the stakeholders is there. And when we are creating and uh, talking about the value creation for the stakeholders, then this uh, best suits the organization's mission and that, that is making this particular change, change of this uh, uh, di differentiation is there. Now, whatever the uh, differentiation you make vertical or horizontal, ultimately you have to keep in mind that is uh, what is the organization's mission and how we can create the value for the stakeholders are there. Now, when you are having the differentiation, so there will be also necessity for the balancing the differentiation and integration is there. So, horizontal differentiation is supposed to enable people to specialize and thus become the more productive is there. So, however, the companies have often found that the specialization limits uh, communication between the subunits and prevents them from the learning from one another is there. As a result of the horizontal differentiation, the members of the different functions or divisions develop a subunit uh, orientation, a tendency to view uh, one's role in the organization strictly from the perspective of the time frame, goals and interpersonal orientation of one's uh, subunit are there. So, here horizontal differentiation is to make people is there and uh, that becomes the more productive is there. So, similarly uh, we find so, however, the companies have often found that the specialization limits communication between subunits and prevents them from the learning from one another. As a result of the horizontal differentiation, the members of the different functions or division develop a subunit orientation, a tendency to view one's role in the organization strictly from the perspective of the time frame, goals and interpersonal orientation of the one's subunit is there. Here it is becoming very, very important that is the whatever the balancing you are making like for example, the horizontal differentiation is there, then definitely in that case uh, the people uh, they will be more or less at the equal level and then in that case uh, that balancing between the interpersonal relationship uh, uh, will be requiring the uh, more concern is there and limit communications are uh, and uh, uh, here also you will find that is the communication uh, that is uh, between the subunits and prevents them from learning from the one another is there. Here it is also to be noted as a result of the horizontal differentiation. 
the members of the different functions or the divisions develop a sub, uh, sub unit orientation, a tendency to view one's role in the organization strictly from the perspective of the time frame, goals and interpersonal orientation of one's sub units are there. So, um, uh, this is uh, when you are talking about the interpersonal relationship, then definitely it will also change the goals and then they will also change the interpersonal uh, orientations are there. So, please uh, uh, understand that is the whatever the relationship relationship is there in these uh, between the two aspects, then uh, it has to be uh, concern uh, for the uh, relationship is there. So, how to facilitate communication and coordination among subunits is a major challenge for the managers are there. So, uh, here we have to understand that is the how we are facilitating uh, this uh, uh, communication uh, because the uh, all are at the equal level and therefore, in that case uh, their authority, their responsibility, their roles, uh, they are becoming more or less common and equal. Uh, so, this coordination among uh, subunits is a major challenge uh, for the managers. One reason for the problems on this front is the development of the subunits orientations uh, that makes the communication difficult uh, and the complex is there. Uh, here the uh, it is becoming very, very important uh, that is uh, what type of this uh, development or the uh, communication uh, uh, is level is maintained because it uh, uh, more or less um, it has been observed in the limitation of the horizontal uh, um, uh, organization structure is that is uh, man organization or management has to coordinate uh, this communication very strictly and uh, because uh, there is a difficulty and the, it becomes complex. So, uh, what is the role and responsibility of the management? Management has to integrate it. So, this integration of power process of coordination among various tasks, functions and divisions, uh, so that they work together and not at the, uh, the cross purposes are there. So, seven integrating mechanism or the techniques are there that managers can use as their organization's level of the differentiation increases are there. This uh, integration of mechanism can be done by the hierarchy of authority is there. The simplest uh, integration technique in the organization hierarchy of authority which differentiates people by the amount of the authority they possess uh, because the hierarchy dictates who reports to whom uh, if uh, uh, coordination various organizational roles are there. Manager must carefully divide and allocate authority within a function and between the one function and other to promote the coordination is there. So, direct contact between the people of the different subunits is a second integrating mechanism so that are often more problem associated with using it effectively than with the hierarchy of authority is there. So, the principal problem with the integration across function is that a manager in one function has no authority over a manager to the another is there. Now, here whenever we are talking about uh, this type of the responsibilities, uh, so manager uh, has to take the and uh, have a direct contact uh, with the is all, all, all the people, those who are working and uh, more problem which are associated with using this uh, horizontal mechanism that is to be effectively uh, resolved. The principal problem in integration across the function is that uh, here the manager has no um, authority over the another is there. As I mentioned, because it is a horizontal structure, all are equal and therefore, there is not an authority uh, one over the another. Uh, if it is the situation, then in that case, uh, the management has to be very careful in the integration because there is a direct contact uh, and uh, the, uh, there will not be a superior subordinate to relationship. Now, the third one is the liaison roles are there. So, as the need for the communication between the two subunits becomes increasingly important uh, often because of a rapidly changing environment, one or a few members from the each subunit are often given the primary responsibility to work together to coordinate subunit activities are there. So, naturally uh, in there are the different groups are there and they are working together. So, uh, all uh, to get work done from all. Uh, so, it, it is a coordinator has to be there. So, you have to select the one member and that he will work as a coordinator um, amongst the all members are there. Uh, so, he, he will make the function smooth. Uh, so, communication will not be a problem. He will be able to communicate to the rest of the members and similarly, the rest of the members can communicate to this particular coordinator about a particular issue. 
Now, the task forces are there as an orga organization increases in size and complexity, more than two subunits may need to work together to solve the common problems. So, task force is a temporary committee set up to handle a specific problem is there. So, either you can have the liaison or you when there is a large size or complexity is there, then definitely you can in involve a task force which will be solving the common problems are there. So, task force is a temporary committee set up to handle a specific problem is there. One or a few members of the each function join a task force that meets the regularly unit a solution is found. So, therefore, this particular task force uh, which will be integrating uh, this mechanism or the techniques are there. So, here it, it, it has the importance uh, that is uh, how the task force uh, can create uh, this type of uh, the relationship or the playing the role. So, that the, in the horizontal structure uh, that these uh, all the uh, committee members uh, mm, and they set up uh, a relationship uh, with the all other members are there. Task force members are the responsible for taking the solution back to their functions to gain their input and approval is there. So, here in uh, um, what will be the role and responsibility of this uh, task force. So, therefore, they will be functioning uh, to get the input, uh, uh, they will be like uh, uh, communicating between the uh, the rest of the members and the management is there. So, that they can get the inputs and approval. To increase the effectiveness of the task forces, uh, a senior manager who is not a member of any functions uh, involved usually chairs the meeting. Uh, so, therefore, in that case uh, he will be able to coordinate for the rest of the functions. There are the certain teams also. When the issue is task force is uh, dealing with uh, becomes an ongoing strategic or the administrative issue, the task force becomes the permanent is there. A team is a permanent task force or the committee is there and therefore, this team or committee and that will be taking integration of mechanism amongst the all. So, uh, these integrating roles of the departments are there and organization becomes large and complex uh, communication barriers between the functions and divisions are likely to increase. So, managers in a division making different products for example, may never meet one another and integrating roles is a full time man managerial position established to improve uh, to proper communication between the divisions are there. So, these uh, balancing the centralization and the decentralization. The hierarchy defines the area of each person's authority within the organization. So, more companies however, complain that when hierarchy exists, uh, employees are constantly looking for their superiors for the direction is there. Now, now, when we are talking about the hierarchy structure, then naturally there is a uh, one person is reporting to another person and then levels of this uh, reporting is high. So, therefore, in that case many companies, uh, they, they are having the, this type of uh, um, this uh, problem that is uh, there is a huge hierarchy is there. So, reach to the top person is become difficult and what top, com top person communicates, uh, it uh, very reaches to the, uh, the last person. Uh, in a very different form. So, the employees are constantly looking to their superiors for the direction that is a what, what is the direction is there. So, when some new or unusual issues arises, they prefer not to deal with it or they pass it on their superior is there because there is a big hierarchy. So, why to take uh, the risk and therefore, they will take pass on their decision making role to the superior rather than assume responsibility and the risk of the dealing with it. But in the case of the horizontal structure, no, you are supposed to take the responsibility and take the decisions are there. The solution involves decentralizing authority and it is implies at the lower level in the hierarchy where given the authority to decide how to handle the problems and the issues uh, that arose while the, they perform their jobs are there. The issues of how much to centralize or the decentralize the authority to make the decisions offers a basic design challenge for, for the all the organizations are there. So, there uh, here it is ultimately it is the responsibility of those coordinators or those uh, um, the decision makers, those who are having that authority and they have to make the challenge to get this particular um, uh, the uh, coordination. When the authority to make the important decision is retained by the managers at the top of the hierarchy 
authority is said to be highly centralized. The advantage of centralization is that it lets uh, top managers coordinate organizational activities and keep the organization focus on its goals. Centralization becomes a problem however, when the top manager becomes the overloaded and immersed in operational decision and making about day to day uh, resource issues. By contrast, uh, when the authority to make the important decisions about organizational resources and to initiate new projects is delegated to the managers at all levels in the hierarchy authority is highly uh, decentralized. So, the advantage of decentralization is that it promotes flexibility and the responsiveness uh, by allowing the low level managers to make on their spot decisions. Managers remain accountable for their actions, but have the opportunity to assume greater responsibility and take potentially uh, successful risk. The downside of the decentralization is that if so much authority is delegated that managers of all levels can make their own decisions, planning and coordination becomes very difficult. Thus, too much decentralization may lead an organization to lose control uh, of its decision making process is there. So, the challenges facing all organization large and small is to design and structure that uh, achieves the right balance between the uh, standardization and the mutual adjustment is there. So, standardization is the conformity to specific model or the examples defined by the well established sets of rules and uh, norms that are the considered proper in a uh, given situation. Standardized decision making and coordination through rules and procedures uh, make the people's actions uh, routine and the predictions are there. Now, when we talk about the mutual adjustments, uh, on the other hand at the evolving process that which uh, people uh, uh, use their current and judgment of uh, uh, events uh, rather than standardized rules of uh, to address problems uh, guide decision making and they promote coordination. As a result the right balance makes a very uh, actions pro, uh, predictable. So, that the ongoing organizational tasks and goals are achieved, uh, yet it gives the employees the freedom to behave flexibility, so they can respond to new the roles and responsibilities. The challenges facing all organization uh, whether it is required that is the they are having uh, actions routine and the predictions are there, so that will be the creating the uh, standardization. The right balance is always required between this, uh, uh, this uh, center standardization and the mutual adjustment is there. Because uh, when you mutual ad adjustment on one side, uh, they are making this uh, guide decision making and the promoter coordination and the right balance makes uh, many actions predictable, so that the ongoing organizational task and goals are achieved. Yet, it gives the employees the freedom to behave flexibly, so they can respond to new and changing sustainable creativity is there. The another way of the standardization and the mutual adjustment is the formalization uh, that is the written rules are there. So, formalization is the use of the written rules and the procedures of the standardized operations. Uh, rules are format uh, written statement that specify the uh, appropriate means by the reaching uh, desired goals. When people uh, follow rules, uh, then they become uh, in accordance with the certain uh, specified uh, principles. A high level of uh, formalization typically implies centralization of the authority is there. A low level of the formalization inspires that the coordination, the product of the mutual adjustment among the people across the organizational functions and the decisions making a dynamic uh, process um, in which the employees apply their skills and abilities to respond to change and the solve problems. The so, mutual adjustment typically implies the decentralization of the authority uh, because the employees must have the authority to commit the organization to certain actions when they will make the decisions are there. Now, in the socialization and the understood norms are there. So, norms are standards are the styles of behavior that are considered typical or the representative of a certain group of people and which are also regulate and the govern their behavior. So, members of the group follow a norm because it is a generally agreed upon the standards for behavior. So, many norms uh, uh, arise uh, informally as people work together over time is there. Now, the name given to the process by which the organization members learn the norms of an organization and the uh, intent that these uh, uh, unwritten rules of the conduct is the socialization. In general, organization can encourage the development of 
standardized responses to the innovative ones are there. The when the standardization versus the mutual adjustment uh, have the facing these uh, managers, uh, then the mutual adjustment can provide the employees with the opportunity to discover the new and better ways of achieving the organizational goals. So, managers facing the challenges of balancing the need for standardization against the need for mutual adjustment need to keep to mind that the people at uh, higher levels uh, uh, and in functions that perform complex uncertain tasks uh, uh, rely more on uh, this uh, mutual uh, uh, adjustment uh, then on the standardization of the coordinate their actions are there. This is the case study um, how can Coca Cola fizzle out on globalization and infamous example of a big corporation facing the uh, disastrous consequences from the making the frequent shift uh, in its organization design uh, is a Coca Cola and this case study will be uh, helping you that is the uh, how when the, when you are going at the global level how to think the global and uh, act globally is there. This case study will be also giving you uh, that is the how uh, we can make uh, the local business the while the way we become the global and then how to control this global organizations are there and as you can find out that is this globalization will lead to a great success with the proper departmentation and the decentralization. This is the research paper organizational design change in the multinational supply chain organizations uh, and the purpose of this is becoming increasingly a complex. Uh, so, therefore, managers to balance to diverse needs as a result managers continuously face the need to change how they are organize their internal support chains are there. The, uh, this is the research paper uh, which will be helping you to understand and discuss supply chain management capabilities that which that we can one manager can develop to meet the perceived changes in the business needs are there. This is the book uh, organizational structure and design applications and challenges uh, and this book will be helping you uh, to more understanding about the what type of the organization structure and designing of the organization structure will be there. And throughout this book is the effective management of organizations requires an understanding of the theory research and practice you will be having. Now, these are the references that you can go through these references to study more into the details and which will give you an idea that is the what type of the organization structure that is a horizontal or the vertical organization structure and what are the challenges are associated with this particular designing of the structures are there. Thank you.